Hey, what's up guys? It's sick and today I want to just do a new quick video on doing this MQ next migration thing. Uh, there's been some changes since some of the last videos that I've done and I kind of just want to go over some of that in kind of a, a single a single format with a couple of quick demonstrations of some of the stuff that next has just kind of an all in one sort of video. Uh, so when I link that sick migrate thing that gives you some instructions, you get a little video that you can watch along with it. Okay. So if we look at, so the first thing we want to do is we want to download next via the launcher. Okay. So I got a little thing here. <clears throat> Welcome sick. Uh, we're in the red guides launcher. If you look at this little box down here, live test emu beta NQ next. Now soon the, we call it the stable version. It's the primary version that we offer here at red guides is going to be macro quest next. Okay. It's just macro quest. Um, so that it will be soon until that happens. If you want to install and get set up with next, uh, you would just go to your drop down right here in this right hand corner and select MQ next. And, uh, you hit the install button, just like you would the first time you installed macro quest. Um, now on the settings tab, you can select where you want to install it. If you want to install it somewhere that is not the default folder, what you do not want to do is you don't want to install this over your macro quest two folder. They're not compatible. The directories are different. There's a whole bunch of stuff. It's just, it needs its own place. Give it its own little home. Let it be happy. Okay. So for me, I like mine easily found. I have mine on my F drive. So F next, uh, shut up. So <laughs> I got this on my F drive and, uh, now I'm just going to go and I'm going to go update. It's going to do all that where it's thinking about doing all the cool stuff for all the newest things. Now, eventually, like I said, it'll be the stable version. All of the stuff you're used to seeing <clears throat> on this red guides launcher window, all of this stuff will have the same stuff you're used to seeing with live, right? So you can launch EQBC, you can run the mesh updater, um, all this cool stuff. Currently the MQ next, thing is just just launch the bad boy and deal with it on the back end okay um because this is kind of like early pre-release beta whatever you want to call it soon it will have all of that stuff but it's not a big deal we can we can work around all of all of those all of those challenges uh we also need something here for uh for lua's and i will show you uh some lua scripts here in just a moment uh but so okay it's now green so it has installed it boom I can check the plugins tab. You can see it hasn't, it didn't catch any of those when it was installing. So I can update all if I wanted to do that here. Now with any of the quote unquote premium, uh, the paid for plugins with macro quest next, the licenses still sync every four hours. So six times a day, six times four is 24 for any of those keeping up with that quick math. Um, because you're purchasing a macro quest two license and the server has to sync up um, instead of us doing it manually, uh, which was, or the old, the first way that it was, which created infinite amount of license, infinity licenses, uh, which, which wasn't great caused uh, poor Redbot a bunch of headache. Um, so now it syncs up, uh, six times a day, every four hours. So if you purchase a new premium license or renew a premium license, uh, zero to four hours from that time, you will then be able to see it on your plugins tab. Now there are a couple of bugs currently with the launcher. And again, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the launcher and the launcher challenges. These will be remedied right now. There's a bug where the, your macros are updated, but it still shows red. Unless if you go to uh, live and then update it and then come back and then it'll say it's updated, but we can ignore that. Okay. So let's recap. Downloaded MQ next. We got it installed where we wanted. I wanted mine in my F drive. Good to go. Now we're going to go and we're going to do the migration utility. I, I talked about this before. Um, and there'll be a link in the thing, uh, in the video and all that jazz. It's just, it's, it's level one public. So even if you're not running uh, red guides, you can still migrate your stuff. Uh, Nightly made this thing. It's a PowerShell script. So you can open it and look in the guts and, and see what's inside it and stuff. Uh, that was important that Nightly, uh, Nightly felt that was important. Uh, so people knew what was happening with all the stuff. 
uh, and the things. All right, so what we have to do is download the macro quest migrator dot zip. Uh, I'm going to show in the folder. I'm going to unzip that somewhere fun. Let's go back to here. Okay. Okay, so we extracted it. We're going to run this with PowerShell. We're going to follow these instructions. I already did a video for the migrator, so I'm not going to go over those details again. There will be a uh, link in the video so you can follow step by step. If you need me to read what it says on your screen, just follow the instructions. It'll migrate all your all of your configuration files and things like your navigation meshes and, and all that jazz. And then you'll be good to go. So now once that's done, uh, we're going to we're going to launch MQ. Now, in doing that, it should launch your EQBS ser EQBCS server, and there is actually one unified, super nightly, fantastic EQBCS now. There's no, no longer EQBCS, BCS2, EQBCS Mule, EQBCS 799 from 1874, 537 blue. Uh, those are all gone. It's just the one. It works fantastic. I have none of the issues that I had having to swap around to different versions and do all that jazz. Um, and we can also uh, right click and start EQBC server here if it is not uh, already launched. And this is just in your, you know, your little sys tray down here, macro quest, start EQBCS, and that'll fire right up. But okay, so we're in game. I got my little dude in game. Next is loaded, okay? Well, I mean, this looks just like macro quest, right? Yeah, because it is. This is just, this is the, the new version of, of macro quest. Got all the cool updates and, and whatnot. Um, now, I did a video already on frame limiter, but there are some changes to it. It looks a little bit different. So we're gonna open this up, slash MQ settings is gonna open up the macro quest settings uh, thing, and we can go here to FPS limiter. And if you notice the settings look a little bit different than they did by the last time, we can save settings by character. So you don't have to have everyone with the same settings. A lot of people like to make their, uh, their primary character, their driver tune. Um, without having frame limiter. So if they tab over to Discord or they tab over to DoorDash or whatever, they don't have to worry about like their screen turning off or whatnot. Um, this is defaulted to one, actually let's hit all the reset defaults. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Frame, uh, frame limiter is off <clears throat> in the background and render game scene is on. So I want to uh, enable frame limiting in the back. I don't want to render the game scene and I want 0 0.001 target FPS. It's just my personal settings. Um, you don't need to mess with anything in advanced settings. Um, and uh, if you don't want to see the in GUI window, don't click this. If you don't want to see the game UI, don't click those. These are these are intensive operations for EverQuest itself. If you turn those on, you lose some of the functionality uh, and some of the benefit for frame limiter. Um, now. Since we're already in this settings menu, I want to point out that there's a new option here in overlay for enable viewports. And this viewports thing is what allows you to drag in GUI windows outside of EverQuest. Okay, so if this is not turned on, I can't drag this out of EverQuest and use it, right? It just disappears. Uh, if I turn this on, I can actually drag it out of outside of the EverQuest window itself. It becomes its own special, unique little magical thing and uh if i had on the draw in gui then i would be able to see that window on like another monitor or wherever i could see that and it would update correctly while i was somewhere else and perhaps my tune was getting frame limited but the in gui was rendering at the simulation rate um but um so normally i normally have that on if i'm using box hud um and uh that's kind of the next thing we're going to jump into real quick in my uh, list of steps for the uh, migration. <laughs> so we're back here in game. Uh, so we do Lua GUI and we have this cool window. So it says here running lootly box HUD pause or exited. Nothing's paused or exited. You can start or stop it. Uh, you can launch script. So select the script you want to, to run and you can search from anywhere. You like, you know, is it not in your, in this drive? You have the drive somewhere else you have, you store some loot. It's like, super secret Lewis scripts that you bust out when times get tough. Well, there you go. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, so next item on this uh, migration thing, 
if you want the functionality of the MQ2, MQ2 target info stuff, right? Which is like, uh, is this unlocked? It is unlocked. Can I drag it? Here we go. Like these buttons or like your group member distances or when you target something um, and it says the distance to the snow rabbit right there. Uh, oh, I guess the snow rabbit is the race snow rabbit warrior. Um, anyway, so that functionality in macro quest two was in a single plugin called NQ2 target info in macro quest next. It was moved into three separate plugins, which makes sense because they do different things and that's uh, MQ2 group info, MQ2 target info, and MQ2 XTAR info. And again, you just plug in group info, plug in target info, plug in XTAR info. And again, I'm, I'll have all of this in an easy way for you to be able to copy paste or, or reference or whatever. Anyway, so I already have these loaded. They're already good to go. Um, same, you know, same adjustments and, and stuff as usual and customization and, and all that jazz. They're just split into, th into three separate things. Now let's, let, let's take a, a quick look at a couple of the differences. Okay. So one thing folks run into a little bit, uh, that's different is, um, MQ2 map, right? <clears throat> so the clicking is control shift click to navigate where you want to go. Okay. So that's a little bit different than, than live. So map, control, shift, click, okay? Uh, the new easy find is also a little bit different, okay? So if we're doing the find window and we want to travel to assistant, oops, we want to travel to assistant baker Maswen in macro quest two legacy, you would click and it would take you. This, it says here, control, click to navigate. So we're gonna control, click, boom, and we're navigating to that spawn, right? So uh, it just makes it so we're not hijacking the existing behavior. We have our own behavior for when we want to do our own things. So it might, it might take a little bit for some folks to get used to. I remember that it is that because it says it in the top of the window. And I say that to you because that helps me remember it because there is a little bit of muscle memory there. And it is something that's different. There's not a lot of stuff that's different, but some of the stuff that is different is like, oh, I can't figure this out. I've been using this forever and it, no, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then for uh, for group, it's just control shift click, right? So control click is myself, control shift click makes the whole group go. Um, let's do a quick talk about easy find because easy find has had some updates. There's still some updates that are pending. Uh, it says here, it's currently in a beta version. Their bugs are breaking change in the future. Documentation work in progress, not been completed. All this cool stuff. Um, but you see the find window stuff here and you can click in easy find or group easy find. So if this is easier for you to do you can easy find uh, slash easy find space uh, GUI and 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 do one of these things here. Uh, so let's go back to that Baker guy that I know I have a, a thing to. There we go. I'm, I'm running off to the Baker. Um, now, in uh, let's say we want to run to this Cobalt Scar, right? So we're using the in-game map zone guide Cobalt Scar. We set our end activate path. Now in in MacroQuest Legacy we would already start running, right? Now, again, for next, uh, the, the devs are trying to be very mindful about hijacking behavior that, that exists otherwise. So they didn't want to do that. So uh, you can just travel to activate, right? So travel to is the easy find travel to multiple locations. Uh, and I have, a, I have another early video on that that shows some of the integration. Like if you look here, Everfrost Peaks, we go to the Magus. Um, that'll actually allow us to utilize an internal uh, Lua script that's going to talk to the dude and tell the dude where, yo, hey dog, I need to go to uh, the moon or Everfrost or Row or wherever, and uh, then they'll take you. So there's some really, really cool additions here. Um, let's see, other notes on the migration, slash yes and slash no are now aliases. Uh, they should already be in your macro quest I and I as an alias. There is no more MQ2 yes as a plugin since it's it's you it's just an alias and that works just great. Um, but other than that, most of the stuff should feel the same. You should be able to hit the ground running and uh, you should see a lot of really, really, really cool things. Things feel better. Uh, logging characters in feels smoother. Um, accessing stuff and doing things feels better. 
Like, uh, for example, can I, will this display? This is the Macro Quest console and it's the control uh, tilde button. Uh, the, the little button just the left of your number one uh, above your tab button usually. Um, I mean, there's some cool stuff in here. Macro expression evaluator. So if you want to see uh, something like a zone dot short name, right? And I'm just picking something random and it says crescent, right? And then you want to, it's like uh, zone dot name, crescent reach, right? And these like, these are continually evaluated. So if you are trying to keep track of something because you're interested in what a value looks like, you can slap something in there and uh, and keep that like real time evaluation, pretty handy. Um, there's also inspectors uh, for all sorts of stuff. Achievements, I kind of went over this in one of the MQ2 status videos uh, because I integrated uh, slash status space achievement. Um, there's an alt ability in inspection, uh, benchmark tools, C uh, CX string metrics, inventory slots. Like some of this is stuff that you probably don't care about, but if you like looking under the hood and tinkering with stuff, really, really cool information. And uh, we're gonna see more stuff get added here like this real estate inspector is pretty, pretty awesome. And I know uh, I know Brainiac is, is working on some cool stuff here, but you know, you can go in your real estate and, and take a look at stuff. Um, there's all sorts of information that is in the game that we may not like as players or whatever see, but as a, as macro questy people, we kind of like to like, oh, I want to see what's under the hood. Let me take a look. And uh, that's what we have here. So um, the migration should be really quick, right? So Download next from the launcher, use the migration tool, log in game, set up frame limiter, load MQ2 Lua, uh, so you can set up uh, Lua scripts. Uh, right now, the only way to automatically launch a Lua script is by using a uh, config file, a .cfg, and there's a new CFG called in-game. So I have an in-game CFG set to just uh, Slash Lua run lootly. So every time I come in game, uh, I will run lootly, and then it's just automatically running, and I have I don't have to think about it or do anything or worry about anything. Um, so it's pretty handy. Um, some other like really cool quality of life stuff. For example, MQ2 Nav will no longer click on the damn door in the damn guild hall. So if you're navigating around like, oh, I'm navigating, you're not going to be like. Ah! would like to go to the neighborhood even though i didn't say i'd like to go to the neighborhood that sucks balls and a bunch of us have like uh you know things when you zone in like key press forward hold for two seconds and get away from the door so i don't click it and all that kind of bullshit uh but now like an update to the next version of nav means we just we're not going to click the door so uh it's pretty handy anyway i'm going to chip chop this up and hopefully this will be a nice little companion addition to getting everything set up it is literally uh, twice or three times as, as quick to set it up and be running next than it is to watch this video of me talking about.